if you want to learn what's new in Umbraco 11, or if you just want to know how to install Umbraco V11, then you've found the right video. On the 1st of December 2022, Umbraco 11 was released. And as you would expect, Umbraco 11 has a ton of new features, including a new property type, and it's fully compatible with .NET 7. Now, within this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know in order to install Umbraco 11, either via the CLI or using Visual Studio. And then at the end, we're going to take a tour of all the brand new features. Now, before getting into the details, one important fact that needs mentioning before you install Umbraco nowadays is support. Now, granted, talking about how long something's going to be supported probably isn't the most interesting thing to talk about in a video in the world. However, understanding the rules is actually really important to your successful planning of an Umbraco project. Now, the Umbraco team adopts a new support model in Umbraco V10, and this new model defines how long different versions of Umbraco will get supported. The reason why the Umbraco team changed their support model was to be more in line with how Microsoft plans to support .NET moving forward. Now, moving forward, Microsoft will support two flavors of .NET, long-term support or LTS. LTS releases will be supported for up to three years. Now, the other flavor of releases are standard support releases. Now, Microsoft will only provide support for STS versions of .NET for up to 18 months. So Microsoft are aiming to release a brand new STS version every 12 months. So let us compare how this plan maps to the release roadmap for .NET. So .NET 6 is LTS support. So .NET 7 is STS support. So .NET 7 will be around for about a year and support will run out for it six months before support run out for .NET 6 on May 14th, 2024. .NET 8 will then be the next LTS release. So this .NET release schedule then maps into the Umbraco release schedule like this. So Umbraco v10 uses .NET 6, so it's LTS. Umbraco 11 uses .NET 7, so it's STS. v12 is planned to be on .NET 8, so it should be an LTS release. The key takeaway here is that if you only upgrade your website following the LTS schedule, install v10 and then wait until v12 comes out, which should be released about November 2023. Now, if you always want to be on the latest and greatest version of Umbraco, then expect to upgrade your website every 12 months. And the choice that you want to take is completely up to you. Installing Umbraco easily and quickly requires certain prerequisites to be set up on your development machine. Now, you might be tempted to skip some of these steps, however, don't. Trust me, as someone who's very impatient, you won't get anywhere faster by skipping them. Now, the next logical question is, what are these prerequisites? So, you need .NET 7 installed. And when you install .NET 7, I also recommend that you download and install the hosting bundle. Now, this bundle will contain all the dependencies that your local machine will require in order to host your website via IIS. Next, you want to smash on the subscribe button. If you love Umbraco, you will not want to miss out on my weekly videos published every Sunday that I promise will help you to become a better Umbraco developer. Now, if you are finding value from this video, I would also really, really appreciate it if you click on the like button. Clicking on like helps me with the YouTube algorithm and it means I can continue making videos. Next, you'll also need to ensure that Visual Studio is installed locally and it's patched to the latest version. So on the day that .NET 7 was released, VS 2022 17.4 was released, and I recommend that you make sure you're using that version. Finally, you'll need to consider your database. Now, it is possible to install your CMS database using SQLite for speed. Don't do this. Instead, I recommend that you opt to use SQL Server to host your database. And to make sure that the database installs very smoothly, you need to make sure that these five important prerequisites have been met. So what are these things? First, you need to make sure you have SQL Server installed. I recommend that you also install the SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS. Now, in here, you also need to make sure that you allow for remote connections. Otherwise, the database user that you're going to use will fail. Next, you need to make sure that you have a valid database user that you can connect to. And finally, you need to create a blank database in order for the installer to install things into. In order to install Umbraco, 
you will first need to install a project template and you can install the Umbraco template via the .NET CLI. Now this template is going to have all the instructions, all the references to the packages that we need to create an Umbraco powered website. Now the command that we need to run to install a brand new template is .NET new install and then umbraco.template. After installing the template, you can either create a brand new site using the CLI or via Visual Studio. Now, in order to install a brand new site using the CLI, we can do .NET, and then we can do a new, and then we can do umbraco, dash dash, name, and then anything here is going to be our project name. So I'm going to call it John's Project. Following on this is going to create a brand new website for us in its own unique folder. Now, in order to run this site so we can launch Umbraco, we need to do CD John's new project. Then in order to run this project, we can do a .NET run. The alternative way of getting all the code required to start an Umbraco website is via Visual Studio. So from here, click on create a new project. From the next screen, make sure that C Sharp selected. From here, we can do a search for Umbraco. You can see that we've got two templates. So ignore the Umbraco package one, unless you want to build some plugins. The package that you want to use is Umbraco project. I click on that. I'm going to give it a name, so it's going to be test proj. You can see that we've got a location. We can give it a solution name. Again, clicking on the big next button underneath my head. Now, the next thing I want to do is make sure that .NET 7 is selected. And we've also got on Braco 11.0.0. So if you're not seeing any of these options, then you probably haven't installed one of the prerequisites correctly. Now, underneath here, we've got loads of different settings. And if I'm honest, basically all this stuff here can be done a little bit later so you don't need to do that yet next i need to click on the create button which again covered by my head and off we go and in order to start creating and installing the website we can just go through the iexpress module hopefully this is then going to fire up our website and everything should be good regardless of the installation path you took when you launch your website, you're going to bump into the Umbraco installer. And from here, you need to add in the credentials for your super admin account. And if you forget these details, you won't be able to log into the CMS. So in my example, let's call him John. I'm going to put in a password, which is Umbraco, Umbraco. From the bottom of the screen, we can then pick where our database is going to be hosted. Now, for the quick and easy option, you can use SQLite. This is going to create a database within your files. What I recommend is that you change your database, you set it to use SQL, and then from SQL, you need to add in your server address, database name, a login, and password. Now, I'm not going to go through the instructions on how to set SQL up. I did that previously in my Umbraco 9 video, which again is linked to in the tutorial below. From the installation screen, you can also define the data consent policy. Now, this policy defines the amount of usage data that you feel sending back to Umbraco so they can see what happens when things go wrong. After you're happy with all your options, click install and the wizard will install Umbraco for you. Now, after the wizard completes, the Umbraco backend should load and you should now have Umbraco v11 installed. Boom! Umbraco 11 has some really useful new features, and below we will deep dive into the best new features. As mentioned, v11 supports .NET 7. .NET 7 has two main features that you should probably care about. Now, the first one is C Sharp 11. C Sharp 11 has a few nice features like list based pattern matching and better null handling. And if you want to learn more about these features, I've recorded a video all on this subject, which you can find in the related tutorial link to below. The other main benefit from using .NET 7 is performance. Apparently within .NET 7, there are over 700 performance related PRs that were merged in. Now this means that over 23 areas in the code base are now significantly quicker than before. And a dude named Stephen Tube wrote a blog article which is over 75,000 words long. 
This was going to take you about an hour or two to read. However, in there, he completely covers every single one of these performance tweaks. This means by using .NET 7, your website could be slightly faster. Now, the biggest new feature in terms of added functionality in V11 is a new property type called the Block Grid Editor. The Block Grid Editor does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a property that allows content editors to add blocks within a grid. If you want to simply test out this property, when adding the grid document to a type, you have the option of installing some additional templates. And adding these sample templates or blocks will install a headline block, an image block, a rich text block, and a two column block. You can create brand new blocks by creating document types and setting them to element types. And this process is exactly the same as how we created components in V10. I give the block grid editor a massive thumbs up. Having a property type that allows editors to build components in a grid is a useful tool to have in your content modeling toolkit. On the flip side, having a property that allows developers to build blocks using document types, which can then be used to turn into strongly typed C-sharp classes using a bracket models builder, allows for a much better development experience. The first really big change you'll notice with Embraco is the UI. So the installation wizard has a few more options. The login screen has a nice new shiny background. Another big change is in the Embraco package marketplace. And in previous versions of Embraco, if you wanted to explore what third party packages were available for you to download, you went to rumbraco.com slash packages. Now the marketplace has been given a brand new makeup, which can now be found at marketplace.umbraco.com. Now the Umbraco UI has also been updated to point to this new marketplace. It is now a much nicer experience to find the package that you're looking for. Sadly, you still can't install packages directly via the package manager interface the same way you could in V8. Instead, you get access to a much better looking UI and easy access to the installation command. So you can install packages via the terminal. A number of the third party dependencies that the CMS relies upon have also been upgraded within V11. Now, the most notable one of these is around Tiny MCE. In case you didn't know, Tiny MCE is the third party package component and Braco uses for the rich text editor. Now, within V11, Tiny MCE has been upgraded from V4 to V6. So there is a word of caution around this upgrade. Now, if you've created any custom Tiny MCE plugins within Braco V10 and below, be aware that because Tiny MCE is a major upgrade, these plugins may break. Now, aside from Tiny MCE, a few other packages have also been upgraded. However, all these have been minor bumps and not major bumps. So nothing really new in terms of functionality or breaking changes there. Another noteworthy upgrade, which we're not going to mention in this video, is around Umbraco Forms. So if you want to learn more about that, head to the internet to learn more. Now, the last thing I want to mention that I think is pretty cool is workflow. Now, compared to some of the other enterprise level CMSs on the market, I think Umbraco has always been a little bit lacking when it comes to workflow. Now, out of the box, workflow is great for smaller teams. However, if you work within a larger organization with complex needs, it was a bit limiting and not ideal. The Umbraco team have released a brand new and improved workflow package. Now, the sad news is that this package is not free and it's going to cost you £2,250 per domain. After installing the workflow module, as soon as you log into Umbraco, you're going to be greeted with a brand new workflow tab. And from here, you're going to see a list of all the outstanding requests that need your attention. Now, in order to get going and creating a brand new workflow, you'll be going to the workflow tab at the top. And from here, you can see a list of all the active workflows, the cancelled workflows. And from the approval groups, you can then create a brand new workflow sequence. So clicking on create group, it's going to allow you to create a brand new workflow. From here, you can name your workflow, give it a group email, and then set up some roles and permissions. Clicking on the roles or the member tab will allow you to define who can do what, and more importantly, who is added into each different workflow. Now, after we've got a few workflows set up, we can then apply those workflows onto a page or a section of pages. Click on any page and then 
within the workflow tab where all the content apps go we can then make some changes now from here you can see that we can activate a workflow or configure a workflow now the configuration tab will allow you to set up your workflows and then we can save it after saving it we can then activate a workflow for any piece of content so we can say here you know i don't want to review and i can set a schedule date and then i can request my workflow to trigger and because i'm the admin of this account you can see that straight away i've now got this notification and it's allowing me to either approve reject or cancel my workflow and as you can see this workflow is a lot more powerful compared to the previous one where we kind of click on here we'd set some permissions and then we'd set permissions basically of who could do what workflows will give you a lot more power of creating very fine grain level workflows so that wraps up our tour of umbraco 11. as you see super simple to install there's some nice new features now personally when it comes to actually upgrading what do we think well if you're going for a brand new umbraco build i recommend you start with 11. and if you upgrading from umbraco v8 or below i recommend going to 11. if you are on umbraco v10 already the choice is a little bit harder if you upgrade to v11 you're going to have a lot more maintenance work and you're not really going to get that many new features so as they say the choice is yours finally if you want to learn more about umbraco that done a deep dive video about umbraco and its project structure that i recommend you check out so you can click on that video and find it right here now before you leave don't forget to smash the subscribe button and click on like otherwise i hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in this beautiful world and until next sunday happy coding